prayers that you would meet us where you are. I pray that our students remember to go get a card, fill it out, and take these next four songs as a time to give back to you from what you've given to us. We love you. Thank you. Name I pray. Amen. Here we go. Cut it! 
Alright, we're gonna sing this out like nobody cares, alright? Cause in your death, I found my life. I'll sing until my world's on fire. Cause in your death, I found my life. I'll sing, come on. World's on fire. Cause in your death, I found my life. I'll sing until my world's on fire. Cause in your death, I found my life. I'll sing until my world's on fire. Cause in your death, I found my
my shame is gone I won't be shackled to the way I was Well, I'm gonna live like my chains are gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I sing hallelujah Done, oh done Like the battles won, yeah. Fall back down because the time is up. Yeah, I'm gonna live like the stone is gone. gone. I've been strong and I've been broken within a moment I've been faithful and I've been reckless at every bend I've held everything together and watched the shatter I've stood tall and I have crumbled in the same And I have trembled towards surrender She's my heart adrift and drifted home again Plundered blessing till I've been desperate to find redemption and Every time I turn around, Lord, it was still Spare for all my 
Deserve this kind of love. Some this kind of love is who you are. It's a grace I can never add to be somebody you still want. Somehow you love me as you find. Deserve this kind of love. This kind of love is who you are. It's a grace I can never add to be somebody you still want. Somehow, you love me as you find.
so worthy of our praise. You love me as you find me. His grace covers us in every situation, every circumstance. Come on, let's sing this out to him. If you want pray together tonight. God, we love you. God, you're so worthy of our praise. God, you're, you are so incredible. God, your grace that you continually pour out into our lives. God, we know um, that your word says that when we mess up, God, that, that where sin is, there's more grace every time. There's more grace. God, thank you so much for sending your son for us, God, that we could experience that grace, that we can experience that relationship um, with you, God. Never separated from your love ever, no matter what we do, where we go never separated from your love. God, we love you so much. We worship you tonight. Speak to our hearts, God. Speak through your word. Um, God, help us uh, just to focus in and meet us right where we are. We love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Go take a seat, guys. All right, all right, student ministry. Hey, how are we doing tonight? How are we feeling? Make some noise. All right, we're okay. We're all right. Well, hey, I got a couple of announcements for you guys. If you look on the back of your car, what? 
if you look on the back of your seats, you will find some cards. Ooh, ah, wow. Hey, we're starting a brand new series, and I'm so excited for it. And hey, get this. I don't know if you see, we got a little bit of a calendar. This series is called Prom Night Uncensored, and we're going to dive into what relationships should and can look like in your life, from friendships uh, to relationships with authority, that being your relationship with your pastors and with your parents, but also within the confines of a dating relationship. And so this is an amazing, amazing series. I'm super excited about it. But you will notice, and this is a huge deal, that the night before Halloween, the night before Halloween is a Wednesday night service. We're going to be having a dance party, a silent disco, dress up, costumes and all, dance party. If you do not know what that means, you are probably in junior high. Every year at Beach Week, who been to Beach Week before? That's right. For the past couple years at Beach Week, we've done something called Silent Disco, and it is my favorite theme night we do. Basically, we have a ginormo dance party, and everybody gets these little headphones that you stick on with three different channels. Basically, we're bumping three different channels all night long for an amazing dance party slash costume party. It is going to be so much fun. It is what we're going to end this series on, but you do not want to miss week in and week out what the series is going to provide. Uh, there's little theme nights where you and your buds uh, can 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 dress up together, whether it be a Twins day, whether it be a meme night, whether it be whatever. Look on that card. It'll have a little schedule for you. We are so excited for this series. Another announcement, life groups, life groups, life, who been to a life group thus far? Make some noise. Come on. Hey, that's awesome. That is awesome, but it's not enough. It is not enough of you guys. So out in the foyer, out in the atrium, out in the lobby, whatever the heck you want to call it, we have cards for you. We have cards for your friends, Bible study cards, life group cards, so you can give those out and make sure that your life group is the most bumping, the best place. Hey, there's free food. If nothing else, go for the food. Go for the food on Sunday night. You get to talk. You get to watch some football as you dive into a Bible study and eat some grub. It is amazing. I've been enjoying so much with my Woodlands Juniors. Are we in the house tonight, Woodlands Juniors? Look at that. Oh, my gosh. So much fun. Also, senior Bible study, seniors in the house. Where are we at? Oh my gosh, it literally doesn't beat that. But we want you guys to be invested in life groups. It is so awesome. If you have any questions, come find a pastor. We will get you the card you need to get into the group you need to be in on a Sunday night or a Monday night, depending on your schedule. So we're going to have an amazing service. Pastor Mark is bringing the word. And so let's pray and dive on into it. Heavenly Father, God, you're so good. God, we love you. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you're doing. God, we thank you for relationships. Lord, and I know that we're broken humans, and I know that, that relationships can be messy. God, that there's so much brokenness within our relationships. There's so much hurt, God, but you are good despite it all, and you have an amazing plan for every single one of our relationships, God. So as we walk into this series, as we dive into this teaching, we just ask, Lord, that you can bring some real biblical teaching, God, some real understanding into our hearts, Lord, so that we can really have uh, the best relationships possible God, that, that, that glorify you and that point us towards you. So we love you, we praise you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Y'all's worship was good tonight. Can we give it up to the Lord, man? Way to go. You guys are doing such a good job transitioning to having this mindset when you come in on Wednesday nights, really taking the first four worship songs to be your time to give back to God. 
And you're, you are doing that in a way that it's inspirational. The way you connected to that last song and lifted your voices up to the Lord, the way that I see these baskets being filled with prayer requests and praise requests and commitments to give your time, talent, and treasure. And if you didn't before the service, make sure you do after service. Remember, because we want to be a ministry of givers. And so you do, you come here on Wednesday nights and the mindset is meant to be of, I'm gonna give myself away to the Lord for the first four songs. I'm gonna declare his praise. I'm gonna make sure I take time to commit to him the things I need to commit to him for this week. And then, hopefully, we have this time of worship now where we hear from God's word and God says, man, am I so thankful for what you gave to me. Now let me pour back into your life through Pastor Mark or Pastor Jordan or one of the other pastors who's bringing the message. I'd let me bring some, pour some into your life through some and creative elements, some skits, some videos, some things. Because I am, as much as you want to give to God, as much as you choose to give to God, you can never outgive God. So try. Can I challenge you with that? Try to outgive God. I dare you. The Bible says that's one thing that you can test God in. He says, try to outgive me. Try to do better to me than I do to you. Try. Because you can't outgive God. The more you shovel into his oil barrel, I've heard people say, don't worry, God's always got a bigger shovel than what you have. He's always going to give back to you more than you can ever give to him. So we want to be people of givers, right? We want that to be our habit. Can you imagine what your life would look like if you ended every day in worship like we just had, every night, right, you finish, you finish your last uh, thing with school, your last sport activity, your last uh, show you wanted to watch on TV, whatever it was, and you just ended every day, we all show up here at the church, or we all somehow were able to teleport here, and then we just, man, here comes Andrew, and here comes Steven, and here comes Emily, who was on The Voice last night. Did you guys see Emily on The Voice? Emily, who sings here, was on The Voice last night. Emily, we, if you're watching this, we love you, we believe you, and we're praying for you. Keep going, girl. Hold on. Way to go. All right. But what if, what if you were just teleported, and every night we just broke into song together? That's the way we ended our night. And it was like, good night, good night, good night. And then we all got back to our house. Or, if, or what if every morning you got up, and we started every morning with a praise service? I know some of you guys had see you at the poll, right? Um, anybody go to see you at the poll? Okay, a few, right? All right. Now, uh, we need to do better at being able to get to places and going and taking advantage of opportunities where we have a chance to connect with God every day. We want to be givers. What if that was your habit? You see, because habits begin to determine what your heart is. And we're going to talk more about that, but in order to help kind of connect you to that, uh, we're going to do a poll on habits. If you uh, have a smartphone, we want you to go online right now to this website. You can see it on the screens here. It is right there, okay? You can see at the top right there, that address, poll ev.com slash life groups 426, okay? So type that into your browser on the top of your smartphone. Open your whatever kind of internet browser you have. And go to that website at the top, okay? And you're going to be able to enter into the bad habit quiz. And you're going to have a chance to answer three questions, okay? So go to that website. It'll be on the top of every page. But let's look at the first question. The first question I want you to answer tonight is this. Do you pee in the shower, okay? Now, it's an anonymous quiz, okay? So you can be honest, okay? You're going to have a couple of answers you can answer from. It's going to be uh, one of these two answers. Yes, it's the, it's the next place to pee. It's the best place to be is what it's supposed to say. Or no. What then are toilets for, okay? So maybe you answer that. You can answer that. You can get on there right now and answer those questions. Next question you'll see on there is this. Do you pick your nose, okay? Be real. Be real. Remember, it's anonymous, Parker, okay? Don't be giving me no fake answers, okay? All right? Do you pick your nose? You could say yes, but at least I don't eat them anymore. Or no, bugs are actually the grossest, okay? That's question number two. And the third question I want you to ask to get up, figure out your habits is this. Do you bite your nails, okay? Are you a nail enthusiast where you're like, clippers are overrated, okay? So your answer might be yes. <laughs> Toenails too, if I could reach them. <laughs> that part doesn't have to be true, okay? Or no, there's a tool for that, you <laughs> barbarians. That has Jordan Alpha's language all over it, okay? All right, so we want you to answer that, and we'll look at the results in just a second. But here's the thing. Habits are so important. 
Habits begin over time to represent your heart. It's what, it's what begins to reveal your character, who you are. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something. There was a time in my life when I was in high school when I began to look at my habits as I f- was questioning in my life why I felt so far from God. Why I felt like there were so many things working against me. Why I felt like there were some temptations, some struggles in my life that I just could not get past. And as, as I was dealing with those struggles, one of the things that someone challenged me to do was to begin to look at my habits. And I began to pay attention to that when I got in the car, the kind of music I listened to was not good. It wasn't singing about good things. I began to look at the shows and the movies that I was watching, and it wasn't good. And I began to realize that, I, that part of the reason that some of these terrible things were coming out of my mouth the reason that some of these terrible actions were coming from my body and things that I was doing, a big part of it was because of the habits I had allowed to be formed in my life. So we need to take serious the habits that we form because habits are good habits help develop good relationships. And I'm telling you, you've been built for good relationships. In fact, I want to go to this board over here real quick. Because if, if I've never drawn this for you, and it's going to be kind of hard to see, but in general, I want you to think about life as being like a triangle, okay? Are we able to see this? Is it coming through? Hey, yeah, all right, okay. And in general, what God wants for you versus what the enemy wants for you is what we're going to talk about, okay? These are amazing triangles like pizza slices from last week, okay? All right. Now, here's the thing. What we want to find out, and what we're going to be talking about through this whole series, Prom Night Uncensored, is we're going to be looking at, now I know that for a lot of people, Prom Night is this principle of, that Prom Night is the idea of of the night where so many teenagers compromise their convictions. They go against what God says is good for their lives, and they do things that three or four years before that, maybe even just a few months or a few days before that, they would say, I would have never have made these decisions. Now, whether you're a 6th grader or a 12th grader, for for almost all of you, prom is in your future. But not just prom, lots of life decisions like prom where you're going to be thrust into a decision and you're going to have to make decisions and your decisions will be made for you most of the time from your habits. And so what I want to ask you is this question is where are your habits being built from? Because you have one of two choices. You either choose to allow your choices and your habits to be formed based upon the character of Jesus Christ or your decisions and your habits are built upon self. I believe wholeheartedly that you either, because the attitude of Christ is simple, that we deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him. In other words, the attitude of Christ, habits that are built upon Jesus Christ are gonna say, it's not about what's best for me. It is always best about what's best for the Lord and about what's best for others before myself. And when you build your habits upon that as to saying, is this movie, is this language, is it going to help me connect with God, and is it going to help me build up and connect with others? And if that's what you're building habits from, is from the character of Jesus Christ, then it's going to help you be set up for, uh, for strength, strong relationships. But the enemy's going to say, hey, you don't need to make your decisions based upon the Lord. You don't need to submit yourself to the Lord. You need to do what is good for you. And that is the attitude that got Satan kicked out of heaven and got Adam and Eve kicked out of the Garden of Eden is the mindset of, I don't need God, thank you very much, I choose to be my own God. And when you take this mindset, when you are selfish, when you're in a relationship and you're doing what's good for you, and your friends are doing what's good for them, let me tell you, it always brings about distrust, a lack of trust. When you choose to honor Jesus Christ with your life, it builds trust. Now, why is trust so important? You see, because in general, the relationships that we have, when you make the habit of putting others before yourself, putting God before yourself in your decision making, then what your friends and people in your life begin to understand about you is that whenever you make a choice, that the habit that you have is that you are going to put them and their thinking before yourself. So guess what that's going to mean? What? Guess what that's going to mean for you? Does it make you feel good when a friend is going through something difficult and they pick you to open up to? Does it make you feel good when you are in the kind of relationships and friendships with people that when you're struggling with something that you know you can turn to them? Well, what makes that possible? Because you're trustworthy. 
You see, the reason that someone is willing to open up to you about the struggles, the temptations, the difficult things that are going on in their life is because they believe that you aren't just gonna run out of your selfish desires as we see over here and say, oh, Sarah just told me that she did drugs this last Friday. Oh my gosh. You know who wants to know that? Michelle. If I t- Michelle thinks I'm a loser, let's be honest, okay? So if I have the hot information, if I spill the tea, ugh, ugh, that just does not feel right coming out of my mouth. But if I have the good thing and I bring it and I share it, then Michelle's gonna think I'm cool and you serve self instead of serving Sarah, putting her first then all of a sudden, Sarah doesn't trust you. Therefore, Sarah is not gonna wanna be near you. You see, when you make a habit of making decisions out of selfishness from self, what it leads to is separation. And here's the thing, in the Bible, separation is synonymous with death. Because that's what happens. When your friends can't trust you, When you don't prove to be trustworthy, what begins to happen? When someone betrays you, are you like, hey, you know what? You just betrayed me and stabbed me in the back. (laughs) Let's go hang out. Let's do that again. That feels so good. Hey, you know what? I know you just spread that terrible rumor about me and said all this terrible stuff about things that I've been doing. (laughs) Hey, come here. I want to tell you a secret. So maybe you can tell more people. I love that attention that it brings me. No way. That person who betrays your trust, you're going to want to put as much distance between you and them as possible. You're going to bring separation in your relationship. Well, guess what? When there's so much separation, then the relationship is cut off. It's dead. It's what sin did in the Garden of Eden when it separated us from God. As God said, I wanted to be in a relationship with you. You refused to be with me. You chose that you wanted to be like me that you wanted to put your throne above mine, you rejected me and the connection that I wanted to have with you and it brought about a separation from God. It brought death. But you see, Jesus knew about that death. And Jesus came and he built trust with the Father when he came and lived this life and submitted himself to do everything the Father had done. And every decision Jesus made was never from a place of self-interest, but was from a place of interest of being connected to what God's plans were and out of an interest of being able to someday connect you to his perfect family and be able to bring you to his perfect place called heaven. You see, what happens is, is when you build trust, it leads you to what you were created for. Intimacy. Oneness. You want to know what Wednesday nights is about? It's about fighting for that oneness. You want to know about why you need to change your habits? Because you were created for oneness. You weren't created for football. You weren't created to be funny. You weren't created to be successful. You weren't created to be rich. You weren't created for that Hummer limo out there. Though it was nice, can I say? It was nice. You weren't created for that. You were created to be connected to God and connected to other people. So what are your habits? Are your habits being built upon the character of Christ? I'm not talking about silly habits like we talked about a second ago. I'm talking about those habits that matter, those habits that represent your heart. What's being poured into you? Because eventually what's being poured into you is gonna be what comes out of you. But what kind of gross habits do y'all have? How gross are you? Can we just find out how many of us pee in the shower? I'm on pins and needles. All right, here we go. Let's look at the results. The results are, oh my gosh. (laughs) Disgusting. 67% of you, I'm, oh my gosh. The next time you step into your friend's shower, you're gonna be like, there's a 67% chance that people just peed in this. All right, how many of you can honestly say, Mark, P. sterile, just get over it, okay? Where are you at? Oh, yeah, you're shy now. Okay, I see you. I see you, Spicer. All right. All right, let's see. Oh, come on, booger pickers. Come on, booger pickers. Okay. All right. All right. Some of you are lying. You know you are. All right. Some of you are lying. You're telling me that on like a dry, dusty day, you can't breathe. You're all clung up and hung like this. Right? 
You're telling me that you walk up to that guy and you just blew your nose or that girl and you think you might have a hanger, you're not sure that something's about to come out, that you never just do one of these and flick, you liars. And if not, then you're that person who comes up out of the pool and you just got the thing just running down your, you know what I'm talking about? When you, you're like, Frank comes out of the pool and you're like, go! Yeah. <laughs> And you don't know what to tell them to do because you want them to get rid of it, but you're like, please don't put that in the pool. Because <laughs> you know if you tell them, they go, oh, yeah, my bad. And, and you're like, Aah! and you're gone. It's like worse than pooping in the pool, right? You don't. <laughs> all right. Liars. That's all I'm going to say. All right, here we go. And the last one. Okay. All right. 44% are nail biters, 56% say there's a tool for that. Now, I, I do bite my nails, I'm ashamed to say. I wanna stop, y'all can hold me accountable to stop. I'm sure I've gotten sick many a times just by biting your fingernails, it's gross. I know, I can't stop. It's carried over since my childhood, all right. We all have bad habits. These bad habits aren't the ones that separate us from the Lord. What I'm challenging you to do is to really look within your heart and say, what are you being controlled by? Are you literally being controlled by having to keep up with that television show, having to listen to this kind of music, trying to be involved in this way? Is it possible that the time you're given to these things are literally drawing you towards, don't miss it, towards death? filling you with words and language and things that are not going to help keep you connected. What are you controlled by? Point number one tonight, if you're taking notes, is this. Our habits represent our heart. Listen to what Paul said in Romans. He said, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled make it a habit by the Holy Spirit, think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature, that desire to honor self, control your mind leads to what? Death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. For the sinful nature is always hostile to God, an enemy to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their sinful nature, look at that, can never, what, please God. You see, if you are allowing your habits to control your life, I gotta keep up with everyone's doing at school, I gotta get, I gotta follow the thing, I gotta do everything I can to be successful at my sport, I'm gonna let my sport control my life, I'm gonna let my uh, music control my life, I'm gonna let my language control my life, I'm gonna let being caught up in the latest thing going on in our culture control my life. Well, the problem is, is that if you allow that to happen, you can never be pleasing to God. Because God says, as you continue to try to honor yourself, instead of taking time to think about whether or not those things are going to help us connect or whether or not those things are going to help you connect with other people, then you aren't living for them and you aren't living for me. You aren't putting them first and you aren't putting me first. You're just putting yourself first. You're serving yourself. I can't trust you. I love you, but I don't trust you. And if I can't trust you, we're never going to be able to have shared experiences that build the kind of connection and intimacy, that oneness that you've been created for. Your habits really matter. Listen to what it says in Matthew. Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, you brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? Don't miss this part. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For whatever is in your heart, your mouth determines what, you, determines what you say. You see, eventually, at some point, what's in your heart is going to be what comes out of you. What's in here is what comes out. You keep putting stuff in. You keep listening to the wrong kind of music and watching the wrong kind of shows. Does it change how God feels about you? No, not at all. If you feel like rap music will satisfy your life or whatever and listen to stuff, I'm not, I'm not condemning rap music, but if you feel like something other than God will satisfy your life and give you connection, then go for it. Go after it, go after it with all of your heart, but you and I both know that that's never gonna be what satisfies. You weren't built for music. You weren't built for TV. You weren't built for a sport. You were built for connection. 
And if you're using your sport for connection, then I hope that God blesses it. If you're using music for connection with God and for other people, and it's rap music or any kind of music, then I hope God will bless it. And I believe that he will. But if you are using your sport for your own benefit so that people will think that you are great and can raise you up on a pedestal, I'm going to say something that you don't like to hear. I'm going to pray against God giving you success in your sport. Because I know that's not what you were created for. You were made for so much more than that. And I love sports. I'm a sports guy. But I wasn't made for sports. I was made to be connected to you and connected to God. And I want to use sports to further that, not to stand in the way of that. Is your conversations, is your social media keeping you from connecting with God? Are you using it to develop your relationship with God? Using it to honor God? Using it to honor others? Using it to develop your relationship with others? Or are you constantly finding yourself taking pictures of yourself? And posting on social media saying, look at me. That is not going to take you to what God created you for. He didn't create you to be able to talk about how great you are. He created you to tell people how great he is. And be able to tell them how great he thinks they are. That's what you were created for. You don't have to brag about yourself. God says if you will humble yourself and you will make your life about honoring me and honoring others, guess what I'll do? I'll lift you up in front of other people. Just like Jesus who laid down his life for us and Jesus has been lifted up by the Father to the most powerful of positions, the name above every name because he didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped but humbled himself to the place of a servant. Because he elevated intimacy, connection with you and connection with the Father. The second point is this, selfish habits lead to separation. That's what they lead to. Listen to what it says in Matthew. It says this in Matthew chapter 19. We'll read along on the screen. It says, there was a guy who came to Jesus and said, I want to be, be connected to you. I believe. I'm ready to follow you. I'm ready to, I'm ready to be connected to you. And he says, I've obeyed all these commandments. I'm doing everything I can. I'm coming to Wednesday service. I'm going to life groups. I want to be connected to you. And he came to you and said, I want to connect to you. I'm telling you, I'm a good person. I'm ready to be connected. I want to be connected. I've obeyed all these commandments. The young man replied to Jesus. What else must I do? Jesus told him, because Jesus could see his heart. If you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions. You really want to be connected to me? Give up football in your heart right now. You really want to be connected to me? Give up cheer in your heart right now. You really want to be connected to me? Give up social media in your heart right now to me. Give up Instagram, give up Snapchat in your heart right to me. You're really ready to follow me? You're really ready to that? Give it up in your heart right now to me right now. Give up that dream of going to that college. Give up that desire to have money in your bank account. Give up that connection. Give up that job to me. Give up that girlfriend. Give up that boyfriend right now to me. Give it up in your heart to me right now. You with me? What he was saying to him? He was like, yeah, I'm ready to follow you. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, like kind of follow you. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad. Because he has a lot. People thought he was something because he was rich. There was a lot of stuff that he had on this earth. He was probably like 25 years old. Which meant that he had another at least 50 years, maybe 75 years to spend that stuff and get what people was thinking great of him. And Jesus said, you're missing it. Your life is short in comparison to the eternity that I have waiting for you in heaven. Don't invest into this life. Invest into your eternity. Go and sell all your possessions to the poor. Listen, Jesus didn't care whether he really sell his possessions to the poor. I believe that with all my heart. He was showing the man, you, aren't, you don't want me, you want your money. You don't really want me, you want football. You don't really want me, you want soccer. You don't really want me, you just want baseball. You don't really want me, you just want your muscles. You don't really want me, you just want cheer. You don't really want me, you just want your health. You don't really want to be connected to me. You just turn to me when you're desperate. You don't really want me. 
you aren't really pursuing intimacy. You're just trying to use me to continue to build up yourself. Why would I answer your prayer when I know that answering your prayer will only take you further from me? Instead of towards me. Habits are important. And the Bible says that you can do nothing without Christ. You want to build good habits? It starts by being connected to Jesus. Listen to what it says in the book of John. It says this. Jesus said, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me, connect to the vine, and I in them will produce much fruit. Good things will come from your life. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I want to be connected to you. I want to see good things coming from your life. I want to use you in a powerful way in this life to connect people to me and build up a place for you in heaven and to connect people to this perfect place called heaven. But you are living for yourself. And I think there's so many of us that God says, I love you, but I don't trust you. There are things I want to bless you with, but I can't bless you with them because you will take them and use them to draw a wedge further between us instead of using that blessing to bring us closer together last verse Romans 8 9 says this but you are not controlled by your sinful nature you are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you listen you're believers and because you're believers the presence of God is in you he wants to be able to have access, to be able to be able to control your life, to be the habit that you turn to, to be able to build trust with you, to be connected with you in a powerful way and develop intimacy with you. God wants to be one with you. He wants to be in you and you in him and he wants us to be more connected as a family than ever before. But we gotta change our habits. Two of our seniors sent me a video uh, this week of them on their way home in the car just <laughs> singing their heart out to worship music. It was so funny, but it was so cool to see that they were changing their habits. And I'm telling you, it's paying off. God's changing their friend groups. So many friend groups in this place are being changed because so many of you are choosing to change your habits. You're becoming givers instead of takers. You're becoming selfless instead of selfish. You're becoming trustworthy instead of a betrayer. And it's working. Hold on. You want to bite your nails? Bite your nails. But you can't. You can't continue to allow yourself to be dominated by the flesh. You ever been dominated by anything? You ever seen a football tackle where someone got dominated? Like where you're like, oh, you ever seen one of those skateboarding videos where the concrete dominates someone? No one wants to be dominated by anything. But I love that that's exactly what the Apostle Paul said is happening to so many of us. You're getting slammed. You're getting lit up by your bad habits. By listening to the wrong things, watching the wrong things, talking in the wrong way, desiring the wrong things. Let's let God change us from the inside out. Because when your habits speak for you, it's not good. I know what you want. You want to be connected to people. But have you ever had a moment when you tried to connect with someone and instead your insecurity came out or your anger came out or your frustration came out? You wanted to connect with mom or dad, but they said something that irritated you and you said a bunch of mean stuff and then you walked away and you're like, why did I do that? You wanted to be trustworthy, but still somehow the gossip slipped out of your mouth and you're like, oh no, why did I tell them that? She's going to be so mad at me. Because it dominated you. You got whooped. You got lit up by your sinful nature. You know what we're going to be? A student ministry that fights back. Are you in? Let's stand together. Let's pray. You can say seated. Say seated. That, that was a metaphor. Let's, let's stay seated. Let's pray. God, we love you. <laughs> They're ready to go, God. I love that. Hey, God, we want to honor you with our lives. I pray that they'd get something good from this skit. We love you. I think this is kind of what it looks like. In your son's time, we pray. Amen.
Yeah. Bye, coach. Yeah. Thank you for the help. Yeah. I got it. I'll work on it. See you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Bye. Julia, hey. Hey. What's up? How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, so listen, I know that we've been hanging out a lot lately mm -hmm. and, you know, really getting to know each other. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry this took so long, but, you know, prom's coming up and mm -hmm. I was wondering if maybe you would want to go with me. You know, I'm sorry I've taken so long. <laughs> yeah. It's just... Inconvenient. Uh-huh. It took forever. About three months, Polly asked four other girls and they said, no, huh? <laughs> yeah? No, it's, I didn't mean that. It was a joke. Yeah, I didn't, no, I didn't, I didn't mean that, that at but, all. But, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I'm, I really am sorry. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we're like a week out and no, I didn't. we still <laughs> got to get dressed and yeah. You, yeah. you actually, you got a little something there. Okay, I know I have a great spot there. I tried to cover it up yesterday with dye, and by tomorrow I'll probably be a grandma, and you probably won't even want to go to prom with me. <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. I, 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 I didn't mean that. I, didn't mean that. I, I think it looks great. That wasn't even me talking. I didn't, I didn't even know what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah, um, so anyways, you know, we were thinking about maybe, you know, going as a group to Olive Garden, you know. Okay. In Olive Garden? <laughs> Olive Garden. We're talking prom here, man. <laughs> Big boy. First off, <laughs> Olive Garden... <laughs> You get a breadstick, I could probably beat you over the head. It's like concrete. You said no to Fogo, no go to Fogo. I, I oh, didn't mean that disaster. at all. I love Olive Garden. It's my favorite. Yeah, I love no, no, no. it. If, I love you, it. if you want to go there, you know, we, we no. can go to Fogo to chow. You know, I don't care. No, no, I, you know, love, it. Don't, I love it. Yeah, the only reason why we chose Olive Garden was, you know, because they got that all-you-can-eat buffet. Oh. Uh, and the all-you-can-eat buffet? You call me fat? Are you joking me? <laughs> One meal's not enough? I just can't believe it. I didn't, it wasn't me. I don't, that wasn't me. I, yeah, I love, know, it's a tiny favorite. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? Um, you, that, that, that's not what I meant, you know, but, you know, if you want to go somewhere else, you know, I mean, just, just let me know if you have any, like, food allergies or... I have none. Quit talking about them. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I just don't have any allergies. It's not funny. Olive Garden. I love Olive Garden. I love it. It's my favorite. I love it. No. Oh, yeah, you know, j uh, just, just text me, you know, let me know. Oh, uh, no, it's fine. I can just tell you right now. I can, you know I can what? Give you know, it's probably better if I text you. I'll just call you. I don't have cell service because I have Cricket Wireless. I know. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. It's you know. bad. Yeah, we'll call you. you know, I'll call you tomorrow because you probably won't call me three more months. You know what? Oh, it's it's probably better if I call I, you. I, be yeah. I can give you an answer right now. It's yeah, you know, I mean, no, cool. it, it's fine. You know, just I'll call you, you know, probably yeah. call, during yeah. class. So. Call me. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh, call me. Ooh. What was that? What? I'm sorry. It he's, was him. He's I not know. even ever going to ask me again. That yeah, was your fault, not mine. Guy's a freaking loser. I'm just a follower. He's a, he went in. I just didn't know what to do. So you have a piece of my mind. I wanted him to take me. You ruined it. Why did it take you everywhere I go? Come on. Hey. Let's go. I, let's go. Come on. Oh. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of you guys. Come you have on. a piece of my mind. Let's go. Olive Garden, go. really. Oh, Olive Garden this. Olive Garden that. See ya. I hope that highlights for you a little bit about what maybe, it's silly, but you ever been talking to someone and anger took over you? Your insecurities spoke out, like Carter represented in that purple garb, okay? If you can tell that was Josh and Carter, by the way, okay? I'll reveal the mystery. What habits are controlling you? What is it that's dominating your capacity to connect with God and connect with others? Is it your insecurities? Is it your fear? Is it your lust? Is something constantly getting in the way and speaking for you? It's time to fight back. It's time to stand your ground and stand up for what God created you to be, connected to him and connected to others. But it doesn't just happen. You have to engage in the fight. You have to be smart enough to understand there's actually a fight going on for you, for your heart. And building habits is tough. It's a daily routine. And so many of you, I've seen your prayer requests where you're committing and saying, I'm going to give God my first five minutes this week. I hope you're following through on it. Because if you are, like we saw last week, oh, you guys committed over two days, 48 hours of prayer time this last week. If you, that's awesome, yeah. If you followed through on that, I'm telling you, your life is gonna change, your relationship is gonna change with the Lord and with the people around you. It's time to get in the fight. Don't let your flesh dominate you anymore. Choose to listen. Let's pray. God, we love you. And we wanna show you how much we love you this week by building new habits. 
habits that will help us connect on a deeper way with you. And help us connect in a deeper way with each other. God, we're sick of being dominated by our flesh. So teach us how to fight. How to stand for what's good. And how to be able to walk into the purpose that you created for. We love you. We give this time of worship to you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.
that's where you'll be. I count the joy I committed free by. Cause I know that's where. Sing it again, come on. I count the joy I committed free by. Cause I know that's where you'll be. I count the joy I committed free by. Cause I know that's where you'll be. excited that we are here tonight and we can't wait to see you on Sunday morning. It's going to be awesome. If you're in junior high, we have live groups with your seniors who love you and we love it. And then we also have live groups. Y'all don't forget to get plugged in. It's so cool. Your leaders are awesome. They want to get to know you. They want to go through life with you. So head on out there, grab your live groups card. It's going to be awesome. And we love you so much. Have a great rest of your week. Okay, bye. One more? One more? Are they saying no more songs? No more songs? You're done? You guys want one you want, more You want one more song? Okay, I, I guess we can do one more song. Am I living it?
Show me 